Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back, Richard. Today, we're going to talk about another one of our favorite topics, and that is motivation. Motivation. And it's motivation uh, <clears throat> just a, with a little bit different of a perspective that we're going to talk about That's today. Right. This is a graduate course on motivation. That's right. This is not Motivation 101. That's right. And it's from a, well, it's inspired by true right. events. No, it's inspired by a article that was in Psychology Today mm-hmm. called The Mystery of Motivation, written right. by uh, Gary Drevich. We don't right. we don't know much about him because there wasn't any information there. Was yeah, there but, um, but, you know, he pulls from so many different fields and right. so many different perspectives that this article is pretty long it's very pretty, long pretty dense mm-hmm. and um but it, but it's really uh, it just gives you so, such right. a different perspective or a different um angle uh, right. of motivation that we just have to talk about it right we did a did a, a podcast recently about hormones right. uh, in in adolescence and we made the point there that um it's not it's not just what we assumed mm-hmm. um and and this article on motivation sort of takes the same tack is that it's not, uh, we assume that rewards and punishments are effective. Mm -hmm. What this article states is that that may not be the case, and that's the difference. Um, You and I are not big believers in reward and punishment systems, uh, especially with child rearing. We sort of take that Alfie Cohen's um, approach uh, to reward and punishment that, that there are better ways to raise children mm-hmm. than reward and punish. Um, and this article gives the research behind yeah. his thinking. Yeah. Um, um, there's, a, there's a whole literature out there that many people are not aware of that rewards and punishments are not really very effective. Right. We've often said on this program that punishment will reduce the behavior, mm-hmm. but it won't eliminate it. Right. Okay? Um, rewards might work. But they may not work, and they may have just the opposite effect right. as you intend. And, and neither <clears throat> may teach anything. It may not get you. So very it doesn't much. generalize. And right. It doesn't. It can't, may not be used in other settings or other situations. That's right. So, That's right. Um, but I can see <clears throat> on your notes page that you have a ton of things written down, and so you, I know you'll probably need your glasses. I have to, to confess, this took me a couple of tries to get all this organized. Did it? Yeah, because normally we read these little blogs and mm-hmm. it makes sense and we come in and talk about them. This one and the hormones mm-hmm. article were a little more challenging. Yeah. It took a little more um, effort, so more careful reading. And then you try to organize it so that we can summarize mm-hmm. what, uh, this very long article. It's difficult right. to summarize it. But it... But it really divides itself into five pieces, right. okay? And the first piece is the Wells Fargo right. uh, scandal. Right. It starts out talking about the 2011 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wells Fargo scandal where, um, right. well, you, the the employees were um, incentivized, incentivized, <laughs> right? Or else, uh, you know, another word for that is uh, offered rewards <laughs> if yeah, they were that's to. Right. That's right. Um, and get more accounts signed open, up and, right. and uh, get more people into the bank. Right. To open more accounts. Right. Okay. And so the goal was to open more accounts. We don't know what the goal was, whether you had to open 20 or 30 or right. however many per month. Didn't matter. Um, but the goal was you had to open new accounts. But the total number were 2 million. But they ended up opening 2 million new accounts, right? Right. Right. Okay. Some of which were in family members' names. That's right. What some employees would do is they would ask family members, right. you know, I have to meet my quota. Can you open up a couple of new accounts? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to use them. You just have to open them. Right. Okay. Because they said that in many of the accounts, there was no money. Right. It, they were just opening the accounts. Um, but in some cases, accounts were opened unbeknownst to the customer. Right. That all of a sudden you had four or five bank accounts and you mm-hmm. didn't even know it. Right. Okay. That was the bigger problem. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> what... What the point that the author makes, it wasn't the author, it was one of the investigators or, or a psychologist, said, if the goal seems unrealistic, 
and you can cheat to make it, mm -hmm. you're going to cheat. Right. Okay. And so the incentive became impossible to reach. Right. The, the goals became impossible. It, it just, employees couldn't do it. And they right. talk about people falling apart and quitting and mm -hmm. drinking. I guess one woman started drinking hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. There was alcohol in it. Um, that people had to do all these weird things to try to meet those unrealistic goals. And yeah. one of the things they did is they cheated. They yeah. opened up accounts yeah. and customers didn't know. Yeah. So, so while it seemed like a good idea, it backfired and right. the bank ended up having to pay uh, right. millions uh, of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in right. fines. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so the question then is why would it be that people, that, that these potential rewards mm -hmm. <clears throat> result in, peop in others and in individuals um, doing something that they know is wrong? Something that right. some, being so motivated by right. this potential reward that mm -hmm. they that they were willing to do something that's not just illegal, right? Uh, but is going to you know harm the lives of other people, right? That's right, and they would you mm -hmm. know given given that. But and it reminds me of those um, experiments with the electric shocks. You know, the, that's what we're going to be talking Yale, about that. Yeah, the Yale studies. Yeah, you know, they, where they uh, because you, what would motivate a person to do that? Well, it's kind of an incentive. Well, did you know that we were going to talk? We're I going to have a live YouTube chat about oh, right. the experience you remembered the experimenter we're going to talk about that about on that. Um, yeah. i forgot all about that because I, I think if i'm not mistaken i if you're listening to this on the day that it posts it's going to be tonight ah oh, that's right we talked about that a couple of weeks ago that's right all right so we're you know it's the experimenter mm -hmm. that's the name of the movie right. we're going to be talking about that tonight the experimenter yeah okay now so that was the first thing right. he talks about as well as Fargo scandal and how you get things to do, how you get people to do things. Second point of the article is, what does it take to do the right thing? Right. What do you have to do? What What does it take to get people to do the right thing? Mm -hmm. And in this part, he, he makes two wonderful points. One is, he talks about the concept of homo economicus. I wanted to make sure I got it right. Homo economicus. Homo economicus. Right. That mm -hmm. we will act in our economic best interest. Right. May not be the case. Okay. Yeah. We've often talked about mm -hmm. people vote. We said, well, people vote in their best interests. Mm -hmm. Not always. Okay. Yeah. But in this section, he says that um, when people are intrinsically motivated to do something, mm -hmm. economic incentives will reduce Right. and change the whole equation. And he talks, he makes two different, he gives two different examples. The The easiest to understand is the Boston firefighters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he said that the Boston firefighters, um, they wanted to reduce the number of sick days. Mm -hmm. they, they saw the sick days climbing. So they wanted to reduce the number of sick days that firefighters took. So they said, because they had an unlimited number of sick days that they were allowed to take, okay? And they wanted to reduce the number that they were taking. So they said, okay, you're limited to 15. Mm -hmm. in, in a single year, you can take 15 sick days. What happened? The number of sick days doubled. Right. Why? Because the firefighters had this intrinsic motivation of serving the people of Boston. Right. You know, I mean, certain kinds of people become firefighters. I oh, mean, yeah. There aren't a lot of people who run into a building yeah. that everybody else is running out of. Right. Okay. So there is some intrinsic motivation, some um, sense of duty, mm -hmm. responsibility mm -hmm. to the citizens that firefighters and police officers and soldiers have. Okay. Once you change the equation and say you get 15 days, then they're saying, okay, I get 15 days. Right. So they took the days that they were right. given. Okay. Right. Because... What happened was what he calls, he refers to it as crowding out. Mm -hmm. You crowd out the intrinsic motivation by introducing some other incentive, whether right. it's money or time or days off. Yeah. The other thing, you, the other example is picking your kids up at daycare. Right. Yeah. We want you to come at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And most parents do their best to get there at a certain time. Mm -hmm. But when the daycare started to find parents for yeah. being late, then then it changed the equation because they now you were buying something. Right. Okay. It, it went from um, this is my responsibility to, okay, I have to pay $3 for every 15 minutes that I'm late. 
I'm going to buy 15 minutes and not worry about when I get there. Right. Okay. So the the uh, percentage of parents picking up their children mm-hmm. late increased dramatically. Right. So you 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 change you you move from intrinsic motivation to extrinsic motivation mm-hmm. and that's another problem. Yeah. And you and I have talked about that many right. many times. Yeah, he pulled that from the economist uh, right. an economist who who said, you know, one way to increase the likelihood that someone will do the right thing is if you offer incentives right. for doing what you want them to do and to avoid what you don't want them to do. And sometimes, mm-hmm. while that is often the case, as you said, sometimes that backfires <laughs> and, right. and it, it creates additional problems, right. creates other issues. Right, because you're, you're, you're changing the relationship. Right. You, you've changed the relationship from, in, from somebody doing it out of a sense of duty right. to now we have some economic exchange mm-hmm. you know now i'm just right. you know i don't mind pay it's it's worth it's worth it for me to spend another 30 minutes of work i'll pay you mm-hmm. to babysit my children right okay? yeah. so you've changed it to a yeah. sort of a, an employment yeah. um, situation yeah. um number three putting a price on bad behavior yeah okay yeah that that's it's a fascinating uh point because again, we're talking about, you know, what we're talking about some type of exchange. We're talking about some type of, you know, this is what this is worth. This is what, um, you, you know, if you if you do this, you get this, or if you don't do this, you get that. Right. Um, so, you know, for me, it keeps going back to what we what we always say that you know, reward and punish types of. Per, uh, uh, perspectives right. are so restricted, so limited in their utility. Right, and um, and here again, we we can use that daycare example. But um, if if I ask you to come over and turn off the water, mm-hmm. <laughs> remember that Sunday morning. I do remember that Sunday. Or morning. if you ask a friend to help you move, okay, mm-hmm. if something all of us are asked you, hey, we're moving. Can I help? You know, I need a refrigerator and a sofa and all that stuff. And so, can you come over and help me move? Right. And um, you do, and I say, okay, that was great. Here's a couple beers, or I give, you know, right. let's go out to dinner, or um, I take you to lunch, or mm-hmm. there's some some exchange like that. I wouldn't dare pay you for. I, it would never occur to me to say, here, here's ten dollars for helping me move, because right. that violates the relationship. Right. Okay. And so, um, it's. Right. You don't pay somebody, you know, it's like you take somebody out on a date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do they do? Pay you back. You know, they say, here's $10. Right. Here's 20. You right. know, that's, it, it's a fine, it, it, a personal relationship and, a, and doing it for the right reason. Right. Um, becomes a financial, becomes a, uh, becomes a financial transaction. Right. Okay. And you don't want to make things, whether it's money mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. else you're exchanging, right. you don't want to make it a financial transaction. Right. Okay. Yeah, because it, it's, you know, again, a lot of the, what we're talking about is you're, you're putting a price on someone's goodwill, someone's willingness to, to do something, you know, going back right. to the firefighter example, mm-hmm. you know, they're there because that's what they're driven to do. But as soon as you put a price to something, as soon as you create a, um, an incentive, right. um, since we're using that word, right. an incentive for something, you know, I, I think that our nature is to take advantage of that incentive. That's right. And so why wouldn't we? Mm-hmm. And, and so yeah, because you've changed the relationship. Right. You've changed the nature of our relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of saying, "Hey, you know, this is your job, and we appreciate that you really want to be here doing this job, and so uh, we know that you're going to be here as often as you can, so you can have as many sick days as you need, mm-hmm. um, but we know that you're going to be here when you can," and you take that away and you say, "Okay, well." We, you're expected to be here every day, but you have 15 days that you can use as you want. Well, right. That okay. makes it different. You've changed. The relationship now has changed. Yeah. You know, I might still be, um, um, I might still be um, as driven as, driven yeah. as, as um, dedicated as I was before, but now you've changed our relationship. Right. Now you've given me 15 days. Right. Okay. In, in three minutes, for every 15 minutes, $3 right. for every 15 minutes that a parent is late. Hey, a $12 an hour for a babysitter. Right. Um, that's, if I can make $50 at work and pay right. you 12, that, that's an economic that. exchange. Yeah. Okay. And so the, the, um, putting a price, um, you're putting a price 
on violating a social norm. In other right. words, the social norm was pick up your kids at a certain time. Everybody was willing to do that. Um, yeah. Every once in a while you had a problem, but yeah. basically everybody was willing to do that. Uh, putting a price on that, on a social norm, reframes your right. action. Puts mm -hmm. it, in, it, it puts it in a whole other category. Now it's just an economic right. um, issue. Right. Number four is everybody's doing it. Right. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> have you have you stayed in a hotel recently where they have these signs um, that say, um, "Please reuse your towel." No. Yeah, they they have little things now. <laughs> Because most people do, yeah. you know, I mean, some people go into a hotel and if there are six towels, they use all six, you know, yeah. one for the floor and one for mm -hmm. your hair and one for your body. Um, uh, hotels are now, uh, uh, they have little cards printed up that say, uh, we'd like for you to reuse your towel. It saves on energy mm -hmm. and electricity and it's good for the environment. Yeah. So if you don't mind, please reuse your towel. So this psychologist went and did an experiment to see if that would work, uh, mm -hmm. to see if what would what would be the biggest incentive, right. the most effective incentive for people to reuse their towels? Mm -hmm. Well, the plea for the environment turned out to be ineffective. Right. Okay. Also, um, there was another card that said, we will donate X amount to environmental funds if you don't use your towel. And that turned out not to be effective. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So which one was effective? There was a little card that said, we have done a study and we've learned that 75% of our guests reuse their towels. Yeah. That was the effective one. That was one. the effective one. That's right. Because other people are doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. not, you're not getting anything. Yeah. There's no money exchanging. It's just that most other people are doing it. Yeah. Um, plastic shopping bags. Yes. Okay. There was a, this, this study in Ireland. Uh, where they wanted to do away with plastic shopping bags. So they charged um, 33 cents. Mm -hmm. They went to the grocery store, and if you want, do you want plastic or paper? And said, I'll take, yes, it's okay. But they charge you 33 cents, okay? It wasn't that people were paying for it. It's that it was obvious as you were carrying your plastic bag that you were violating this agreement, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was obvious to everybody. And right. so you had this social stigma attached to you. Yeah. That was what made the difference, is yeah. the social stigma. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so we, we are much more likely to do things if we feel like other people are doing them. Right. So, you know, that, that whole, uh, whether it's the, we want to call it the mob mentality, or yeah. we call mm -hmm. it following the crowd, or, right. you know, uh, conf confirming or con conforming right. to, to social norms. Um, but it, it's, it, it is absolutely part of our social being mm -hmm. to, to try to fit in with That's right. who we see as our peers. Yeah. Everybody else is getting to the daycare center on time. You know, right. you're the only one leaving your kid there and it's a social embarrassment. But what they said was if you're picking your child up late, nobody else is there. They don't see you. <laughs> That's right. Nobody sees you picking mm -hmm. your child up late. Yeah. Now, the last part of this are the fifth point that they mm -hmm. make is called cobras, uh, cobras, rats, and kids. Right. Okay. What is cobras, rats, and kids? Um, when the British, <laughs> I just love this stuff. Uh -huh. When the British were, had colonized India mm -hmm. and they were concerned about the number of cobras mm -hmm. crawling around. So they began to pay a bounty to get rid of the cobras. They began to pay a bounty for cobra skins, mm -hmm. okay? And so um, it didn't seem to be working. Why not? Because people were raising cobras right. to, to make money. Mm -hmm. They were raising cobras and they would kill them and give mm -hmm. the skins. And so it was like... Yeah. And so then, it wasn't doing anything to the wild cobras. Right, it was okay? Just... And so the British government said, oh, we're not gonna bother with this anymore. So what'd they do? They let all the cobras go. So that it actually increased the number mm -hmm. of cobras in India. Same thing with rats. There was another country they wanted to uh, reduce the rat population. So they started paying uh, people a bounty for every rat tail mm -hmm. that you would turn in. Once again, people began har um, farming rats, you know, growing rats. The third, the, the third part of this little... Is kids. Is kids. <laughs> it's just worrying me the direction that you're heading. Uh, so we let all the kids go. <laughs> Um, and, and so we have to be careful when we're dealing with children that we don't offer incentives that backfire on us. Right. Okay. And it frequently happens with children, mm -hmm. you know, paying them to do chores. And right. like they, they mentioned one thing and, and um, 
that if you pay your children an allowance to do their chores mm -hmm. and they spend the allowance and then you give them money to buy other things, mm -hmm. well, then they're going to spend their allowance faster. Right. Okay. They're, they're, th there's a disincentive to save right. it because mm -hmm. if they spend they're that real fast, else. they're going to mm -hmm. get some more. He tells, I, I think this was autobiographical, that his parents paid him for pulling dand. You know what dandelions are? Yeah. Do you have them here yeah. in Florida? You've been here. Yeah. You don't see many dandelions here. Well, if you don't take care of your yard, you do. Oh, you would. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, up north, dandelions are a big problem in yards. That's the only, there aren't as many weeds there as here. And um, he would get paid. Mm -hmm. And he learned that if he pulled the entire plant out by mm -hmm. the root, that it would not regenerate. Because mm -hmm. he got paid per dandelion. Right. Okay? So he learned very quickly that if he just pulled the flower, yeah. that he would be constantly harving these dandelions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's making more money. And so... You, we do these incentive programs with children, but we have right. to be careful because they can, again, they can backfire on yeah. us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I worry about that with uh, positive behavior support in the in the schools and different things like that. But um, you know what? What all of this reminds me of is we we the idea that you know we offer you know hey if you fill out this survey we'll give you this. That's right. Well, mm -hmm. you know how how valid might those survey results be right. if if all i have to do is answer these 10 mm -hmm. questions and you're going to give me a hundred dollar amazon card or, right. or whatever you know well, i'm going to go through this pretty quickly because you know i really don't have time to be doing right. this but hey a hundred dollar gift it. card i'll do it right. and give it back and here's my gift card thank you very much there was another he mentioned i remember you know what the very first credit card that i ever got you know why i got it because they were going to give me a t-shirt <laughs> Really? Yeah, I was. I don't know how old I was, but it was at USF, University of South Florida. Oh, yeah. Um, right. I was walking through, and they go, "Hey, do you have a credit card?" And I was like, "No." He goes, "Hey, you want a T-shirt?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> that was so, more okay, important than the credit card. Oh yeah, right? I didn't care about the credit card. Oh, geez, but uh, but yeah. Well, they he mentions here about um, the studies, mm -hmm. you know, and he'll say, "Well, we wanted to conduct this study. And we'll give you fifty dollars to participate." Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, "Maybe I will." If they offer you five thousand dollars, yeah, then you say. There must be something wrong, right? <laughs> you know, if they're willing to pay me five thousand dollars, the risks must be really, really high. Right. And so, just because you give more money doesn't mean you're going to get a better response right. or a higher response. Yeah, you might I think do... I think that the research said, like when you're doing mail surveys, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how many people get these. I get them every once in a oh, while, yeah. probably because I'm because of some membership organizations that I'm involved with. But um, you get something, and I'll have a coin, a, a nickel, right? Um, and that's because there was some research that suggested that a nickel is the smallest amount that you could give someone that has the power to increase the likelihood that they're going to participate <laughs> in what you don't go with penny because if they get a penny they're going to they're, they're not going to use it. Right. You don't and you don't have to give a dollar because a dollar is much more than what you It's really, more than you need. More than you need. So right. a nickel is the smallest monetary unit right. that uh, is needed to incentivize someone right. to participate in a survey. That's funny. Five cents. A nickel. Okay. Yeah. Well, see. I have a bunch so, of nickels at home. <laughs> but you know what? Surveys. Because I read that article, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take your nickel and I'm not going to fill out that. You I'm didn't gonna, do it anyway, no, right? No, I didn't. But they didn't really miss the nickel because no. it wasn't that much. Right. So it's, again, a quid per quo. Right. Um, mess, the message here, of course, is um, we want to strive, especially when we're taking care of children. Right. We want to strive for intrinsic motivation. Right. And once we achieve that, you know, one of the things we say in behavioral uh, behavior management is the concrete incentives or rewards mm -hmm. are only used to get the behavior started. Once the behavior right. is going, then you remove them. Right, absolutely. But we're not doing that. Yeah, we're, we're making really a that. fundamental mistake because we keep incentives, and incentives, we're upping incentives. the ante. That's right. And you have to keep more. doing it. Yeah. Okay. Because it loses its value. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, good article. Yeah. Um, a little bit long. This is another long podcast. Pretty long. But, but again, worth reading because um, it brings a, that, that very different perspective mm -hmm. about reward and punishment. I think you like this topic. I love this topic. Well, we teach it, and it's hard yeah. to teach this topic because we want teachers to stop using rewards mm -hmm. and punishments. Uh, but it's a very it's a hard yeah. sell because yeah. it's 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 so intuitively appealing. Yeah. Um, and so this gives you some additional information. Yeah. Well, definitely check out the article. You might want to take it into chunks and just ah, read we, it in pieces. 
Five pieces. Five easy pieces. pieces. That's right. So, all right. So, until next time. We could do five easy pieces as one of our movies. Until next time. I don't know that movie. Five easy pieces? Stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thank you.